This is the final word daily. Australia versus South Africa Boxing Day Test Day 4 and also the final day of this test match and for this series at least in terms of its relevance. And Jeff Lemon is going to tell us in 30 seconds how it all played out. It played out as predictably as we might have expected. South Africa resumed the day 371 runs behind. They were all out by just about tea time for 204. Yeah, they got through the first 10 overs without losing a wicket, but Sarah Lavia gets out for 21, his optimum sort of score, mm. hit on the toe by Mitchell Stark. Tiernus de Brain edges one into the cordon as he'd been threatening to do all day, and it kind of fell apart from there. Temba Pavuma did his best, made 65, looks good on the scorecard, also ran out two of his partners. Uh, in probably the two better batting partnerships of the entire <laughs> innings. So it wasn't quite what the scorecard suggested. The rest fell away pretty quickly. There was some bashing from the last wicket partnership they put on 27 to get South Africa past 200. Cheers! Because otherwise it would have been eight innings in a row of under 200. Still all out 204. Australia win by an innings and 182. Brilliantly done, Jeffrey. I need to learn how to be succinct like you were with the 30 seconds. I mean, you're not extended two minutes. But look, for me, it, what summed it all up, the series up, this rather one-sided series up, is when South Africa got to 200, the camera panned to some South African fans, I don't know where they found them, somewhere around the MCG, and they were holding up this little South African flag. And there was, it felt like a celebration because yeah. it was. I mean, at least South Africa have something to hang their, I don't even know whether they can hang their hat on it, but something, uh, maybe, uh, whatever it is. Uh, it was their shopping bags. Their shopping bag on. Yeah. There you go. The keys on, maybe. Yeah, that's the best I can come up You know, up when you, you've got like the green bag that you, you you try to remember to take it to the supermarket because ah, you don't want to get plastic yeah, bags, yeah. but then you always forget. And so you hang it up on the handle of the door so that you think you'll remember when you leave the house. And then even so, you still never remember to take it like that. Yeah, or in India, we actually used to hang a bag outside the door so that the milkman would leave the packet of milk for all of you watching this in India, you know what I'm talking about. We're listening to India as well. But look, I'm going to stick my neck out and say this is the, the worst performing South African team to ever come to these shows, at least since readmission in um, 1992. We've seen South African teams compete. They've lost before, but not to forget that they won the last three series here. Where India have a chance to do that when they come here in 2024. But for them to lose that streak in this fashion, Mm. It's, it's it's almost like the Undertaker losing to Brock Lesnar in 20 seconds when you know he finally lost the WrestleMania streak. It, it, it was really really disappointing, and if anything, they may have, they made the West Indians look much better than they were. Bring the West Indies back Absolutely. to play the Sydney Test. I mean, you look you go deep into the history. You look at the 1880s South African teams, the 1912 triangular tournament, the 1930s. There are some really bad teams there because it's a very amateurish yeah. era, and there are teams getting bowled out for 50 and 60, and teams losing. You know, that was the only other two-day test in Australia. Mm. But this South African team is playing like those South African yes. teams, despite being a professional outfit and despite having such a good bowling attack I mean we've, we've talked so much about how impressive Nokia has been you know we've seen how classy Rabada has been across his career um, and then Marco Janssen coming in mm. and being the revelatory performer that he has over the last 12 months but you can have the best bowlers in the world but if you don't give them anything to work with and I think those bowlers would have once South Africa came out and got bowled out for 189 on day one the bowlers would have just been deflated. They would yeah. have gone, oh, come on, you know, we have to do this again. Like, just give us something. Give us some help here. I'm telling you, the day is not too far uh, before the South African bowlers just go on strike. You know, South Africa, the, they get bowled out again for 150. Maybe it'll happen in Sydney, who knows. And then the South African bowlers just don't come out. And you, the camera pans to the dressing room and they you have Rabada and Nokia sitting there saying, we're on strike. We're not going to come and defend this. Not anymore. We're done. And who can blame them? But, you know, on a serious note, uh, you didn't laugh, so I guess it wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to laugh at all of you. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Uh, you know, a little needy at times. I don't want you to think it's too easy, you know? Uh, that is I don't true. Want you to, I don't want you to get complacent, right? Like, that is you, you, you've got to put a bit of work. On. Absolutely. Yeah. Jeff Lemon, tough love. Um, but even some of the strategies, you think about it, you have a struggling batting group. Right, a team that hasn't made 200 as a unit six times in a row, and you and the captain Dean Elgar keeps talking about no, no, no. But I don't want to move away from having. I need five bowlers. You need five bowlers, yes. But just mm. logically thinking, you're putting so much pressure on an already underperforming group, a batting group, and instead of bringing in another batter or at yeah. least adding to that batting mix, so that you strengthen 
your your weak point rather but than. But if you add a, if you've got a batter who's not good enough to get into a team that's this bad, oh, is adding them going to help? That's a good point. That's a good point. But you do have uh, someone like a Hendrik Klaassen who just made 292 what a few weeks ago in domestic cricket in South Africa. But whatever it is, I mean, if if the problem is in anything in life, if you can identify the problem, and the problem is clearly the batting. Wouldn't it make more sense to shore it up uh, and bank? Uh, like they would say, oh, if you have six batters, why do you need a seventh batter to bail you out? Similarly, if you have four world-class bowlers, do you need a fifth world-class bowler? Mm. I mean, you do if you only keep scoring 150. But there have been so many mistakes along along the line. Some of the runouts have been extraordinary. Manas Labuschagne on day one, uh, the, the direct hit. But Dean Elgar literally ran him out. We uh, ran himself out. We spoke about it. And Bauma again, it's unprofessional cricket. I mean, the, the Zondo run out. Um, whoever's mistake it was, maybe Bahoma had called him. But the lack of effort from Zondo, he and he fell by quite a distance, right? He didn't even, he wasn't even in the frame. And Travis had all had he had to do was underhand the ball onto the stumps. But there was no dive, there's no stretch, there's nothing. And the, you're mm. talking about uh, a cricketer who's in his 30s, who's waited a long time to play Test cricket. Oh, where's the fire? Where's the desire? Well, it's, I mean, to me, I, I just thought that Zondo knew that he was gone if the throw would hit. You know, he'd pretty much given up um, before he got there because he responded to the call. Bavuma drops it straight to cover and just goes with the shot. Uh, there wasn't a run on and Zondo was respectful, I thought, in honouring the call. And, um, you know, by the time he was halfway down, knew that he didn't have much of a chance. So I, you know, I wouldn't be as hard on him as that. But it's... It, it was just predictable, you know. As soon as Sarah Levia got to about 21, I thought, well, hmm. he'll get out soon because <laughs> that's what he does. He makes 20 and gets out. Um, yeah, gets a good ball, gets bashed on the toe by Mitchell Stark. The umpire says not out, says it was bat first. They review it. It wasn't bat first. Brilliant bit of bowling from Stark, who's got that busted finger, yeah. the, the, the bowling finger on his left hand, and yet he was still able to, um, uh, to bowl. He bowled more overs than anyone, bowled 18 overs in the innings. Uh, produced that brilliant run out as yeah. well to get rid of Maharaj later in the innings. Uh, and then you've got De Bruyne who, I mean, he edged the ball in front of slip, over slip, next to slip, through slip. And, and eventually the one he gets from Scott Boland is a beauty. It, it, it's on a slightly fuller length, but it really kicks up at Great the gloves. Ball. It gets that bounce. Boland manages to get that bounce from a full length and takes his gloves into the cordon. Uh, catch 150 for Steve Smith. Yeah. He's still flying along. In terms of the, the test catchers list, there's 13 players ahead of him on the list of test match catchers. But, I mean, De Bruyne was always going to get caught in the cordon. He's the guy they're asking to bat at three. Uh, then Zondo gets roasted. They're 65 for four before lunch. And then there was a nice partnership between Kyle Verena, who's mm. one of the few what? to enhance Absolutely. his reputation on this mm. tour, and, and Bavuma. Who, so this was a point, I had some admiration for Bavuma, the way he responded to the run out, because he could have gone into his shell. Instead, he kept attacking yeah. the bowling, like not recklessly, but he kept punching it through the covers. He gets Verena coming in and starts playing reverse sweeps and plays that great pull shot off Mitchell Stark, yeah. rocks back and smashes it out through deep mid wicket. Um, they go on past the lunch break, you know, they put on 60 odd mm. and, you know, there, there was there was something at least to watch for a South African fan. Yeah, but, you know, the story of the series. Collapse, partnership, collapse. Yeah. That's literally been South Africa throughout, yeah. all, across all four innings. Uh, the collapse sandwich. The collapse sandwich, yeah, except at the Gabba, it was just collapse, collapse, collapse. There was yeah. nothing in between, just two slices of bread. Collapse, collapse, collapse. There you go. So, I don't know, is that a famous song mm, that I yeah, should know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because every time I say something, Jeff starts singing a song which I don't identify or recognize, and mm -hmm. I sing some other song that he doesn't recognize or identify. But we'll stick to the point. Uh, at, at the Gabba, four for twenty-seven, partnership, and they lose six for twenty-seven. And once you knew, and even when the Bauma Verena partnership was going on, you knew all Australia needed, and even Australia would know that to break that one partnership, and then you knew they would fold, and that's what happened. Maharaj showed. A lot more gumption than he has so far in the series. His batting has been a disappointment. I know he's a bowler, but for a senior batter to be getting out the way he has been before today uh, kind of really uh, puts this South African performance even further into perspective. He's shown no fight, mm -hmm. uh, but he did show some fight alongside Bawuma, and then the second run out happened. And I'm sure we'll talk about it, but 
after that Hall, Hall of Fame, I think, will come to yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, second sure. run out. Because, Absolutely. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's Boland again who gets Verena, and again, it's that Scott Boland. Sign his other signature, I think, is the one that jags in and hits you on the knee roll in front of middle. He's so good at using this MCG pitch, so two wickets for him in that second innings. Not quite six for seven, but mm. contributed and got two important well, wickets, yeah. you know, and, and yeah, then, then, it, then it falls away, and there's... And, and after the second run out, that's when Bavuma doesn't respond well. Then oh. the next over, he just has a big swipe at Nathan Lyon. I thought at that at that point, Bavuma's given up after fighting really hard for a few hours before that. But uh, like, what what is going on? Like, why is this South African team so bad at the moment? I think I've been breaking my head about it as well. It has to be. Uh, something with their first class cricket where and remember England used to be like that when the pitches were mm. maybe very green and too sporting for their domestic cricket often in county cricket 70 was a match winning score you get to 70 and it's job done you you make sure your team gets to 250 or that's a match winning score doesn't work in Australia we saw it last year when England were here as well now of course they play a different brand of cricket uh, and De Bruyne is a great example I thought he batted much, much better in this innings than in the first innings. He left the ball really well, but he gets to that 40, 45 ball mark and then starts, goes from being a number three to a number six, where he starts flashing at everything. When you have, what, six sessions to bat out, and if this was happening somewhere late on day five or the middle of day five, you'll understand. You have six sessions to go. You've done all the, all the right things. You've kind of seen off the new ball, seen off the first spells from the seamers. And then you start flashing at everything. I mean, there were he could have been caught, like you said, either at first slip, second slip, third slip, gully, on so many, so many occasions. He was dropped by Warner late last evening, um, and and then eventually he does get knocked over by Scott Boland. Uh, that catch from Steve Smith with Manus diving right across him. Uh, but that really just summed up the issues with South Africa's batting. Uh, we saw it in the first innings. Once they get to 50, they play injudicious shots and get out. Uh, I think it's the lack of hunger, where mm. in these conditions, you have to, if you get your eye in, you have to go big, like Craig mm. Brathwaite did, you know, for a brief while, or even Tej Narayan Chandapal did when West Indies were here. Or like David Warner did, you, you watch the model, which is not that Warner came out and smashed the ball everywhere, all. he spent a lot of time not doing that, he just collected runs um, and went about that business methodically and quietly for most of the innings. Yeah, well... Look, they've got players like like you're talking about, Klaassen. I mean, Verena made a big score mm. in first-class cricket just recently. They've they have players who are doing well enough in their domestic first-class cricket to get picked. I mean, you know, someone like Ervia has a good first-class record. You know, most of the players they're picking have good first-class records, but it's not translating at test levels. So that's not something they can fix between now and Sydney. Nah. Um, I mean, do they have any hope of trying to get something out of this tour? Do you bring Klaassen in? I mean, ngidi has been very indifferent with the ball. He's he's not impressed me at all with his bowling no. the last couple of tests. Are you losing much if you leave him out and bring in Klaassen as the extra bat? Oh, and Dean Elgar was slightly snappy with me when I asked him that question. Uh, that was my second question to him in the press conference. I said, so going forward, because he spoke so much about pride and uh, how South Africa need to get that South African pride back in Sydney, uh, do they make a fresh start, bring in guys from the squad who haven't played so far, like a Klaassen or a Kutse uh, or even a Lizard Williams? And he basically said, oh, you're asking me stuff, that questions that I, even I haven't started thinking about. So I said, good, I should be. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of a weird answer. Yeah, I don't want to ask you questions that <laughs> you already know all the answers to. Absolutely. That's my job as a journalist, to ask you the right questions but that you haven't thought of. But, uh, I mean, then later on he said, yeah, maybe that does make sense. Maybe we'll have to go down that road. I don't see them... Uh, I saw uh, Kutsia bowl to Klaassen this morning in the nets and at that point I thought yeah that they have to come in there's no point sticking to the same 11 I don't see them playing the same bowling attack uh, Lungi Ingiri I, one good spell from him last, last evening that's the best we've seen of him all series but I mean he, his 19 did get South Africa to 200 just for that he deserves a place in this side he was smashing Nathan Lyon all over the shop uh, before the very end uh, I don't know where South Africa can go from here. I mean, they've blown away their whatever little chance they had of making the World Test Championship final. But that whole thing, the whole narrative leading into this series, like West Indies was supposed to be the, the weak spot of the Test summer. And it was all about, well, ah, West Indies are gone now. This is the big heavyweight battle clash between one and two. 
that narrative was just mm -hmm. sunk, I mean, completely. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll go to Sydney, we'll see. I'm sure Australia will already start thinking about the Indian tour. Uh, Pat Cummins said that as well. It's sort of the best setup, right? Sydney, so far this summer, the pitches have been dry. Uh, there has been turns, so maybe, maybe for the, for a change, we might get two spinners. And Australia have two big decisions to make as well. No Stark, no Green, we know. Um, so who do they bring in place of them? Uh, and I think that those will be the discussions moving forward. From a South African perspective, yeah, I mean, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully they get to 200 again. You know. Maybe they could get to 220, really, uh, you know. Really start yeah, to milk things. No. Now, the final word, Hall of Fame. This is just when we select the moment of the day that feels the most final word in terms of vibes, you know. Uh, Woodstock Cricket brings you this. They make the best bats in the world. 20% off one with the code TFW20 at woodstockcricket.co.uk. Easily done. There's only one candidate for me. I mean, we've talked about running out two of your partners during an innings. We've talked about the fact that the second one is the one that made oh. Bavuma then give up and get himself out. And fair enough at that stage. We haven't talked about the manner in which it happened. <laughs> Keshav Maharaj batting quite nicely. He's, uh, you know, he'd made, what, 14, I think. Drives a ball out to deep cover. Comfortable three, really. Takes the first, takes the second, turns for the third, starts coming back. Bavuma, as he's running back to the non-striker's end for the second, first of all, he looks up at the big screen. <laughs> And he's yeah. watching the fielding happening on the big screen to find out where the ball is, which is probably not an ideal Tricky. way to go about it. Then he touches down and he's looking at deep cover and he starts walking backwards towards yeah. his batting partner. Not, not turning around to no, run no, back, no, no, no. but trotting backwards. Then he just stops completely and watches deep cover. Then he turns around and realises Maharaj is just about standing next to him. And then at that point he says, oh, no, I'm going to go back to the non-striker's end. Even though I'm the one facing the striker's end and it will be faster for me to run there, I'm going to make you turn around and run there. The throw comes in from the deep to Mitchell Stark at the non-striker's end. Brilliant bit of fielding. Uh, grabs it, throws down the stumps, bullet throw, direct. If it, if it had bounced in, I reckon Maharaj would have made it yeah. because his bat was just on the just, line. Yeah. So he still nearly made it back. But just a truly bizarre run out from... Uh, from Bavuma, I, I don't think I've ever seen one like it. I've never seen somebody do runs in reverse. Or, for that matter, you know, generally a run out happens and they say, oh, he was ball watching. I've never heard anyone be guilty of big screen watching because that's what he was doing. He was watching the ball, but not where it had gone. He was watching the ball on the big screen. And, and you guys have to see the replay where he's running and he looks, he actually to start with looks at Manus and where he is with, in terms of the ball and where the boundary is. And then he looks up I think that's where he kind of loses his balance in terms of what's happening in the middle. And poor Kesha Maharaj has no idea because it's an obvious three, like you said. And even at that point, if Bauma had it, hadn't stopped and had run, he would have easily made it. Especially because the throw didn't go to the keeper's end. It came to Mitchell Stark, who was somewhere halfway down the pitch at that point. Uh, yeah, that was a complete uh, stuff up, as they call it in Australia. Stuff up? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah, good go. yeah, Thank you. Uh, I, that's I just want a to dog's eat. breakfast, mate. That oh. was a dog's breakfast. He barbecued him, mate. Yeah, so <laughs> torched him. Torched his mate. Yeah, he just yeah. torched his mate. Yeah. How dare you do that? Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's really has to be the Hall of Fame. But just a little entry about uh, the Steve Smith catch as well. I mean, you know, I spent hours of my life watching Steve Smith and Manus together and their interesting and fun relationship in, in, in training. But that, that catch, I think a lot of people thought another ball has just gone through the slip cordon where De Bruyne has got another life. Because Steve Smith catches the ball, it's a very straightforward catch. Good catch. Yeah, but Manus is diving across him. Uh, exactly. And uh, by straightforward, I'm, I'm not saying it's a simple catch. But the outcome is very straightforward. It's, it's clasped beautifully in Steve Smith's hand, but he throws his head back. So. I think a lot of commentators at that point were looking at towards third man saying, ah, another one's got away. Mm. Purely based on Steve Smith's reaction. But the reaction had nothing to do with the catch or the wicket. It had to do with his old mate Manas jumping all right mm. in front of him. And John T. Road said something in the SEN box at that point. He's like, this is why they never kept me at slip. Because they were worried I would do what Manas did right there. <laughs> so I think just a little Hall of Fame nomination. Yeah, and one for Mitchell Stark as well for pulling up in his bowling stride and giving Tiernus to Brain a lecture about oh, staying we, in his we crease. We talk about it, yeah. yeah. It's not bloody hard to stay behind the, the behind line, the mate. Line. 
you know, the lion's there for a reason. And fair enough, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, I wish he would just go through with it, just commit, just take the bails off. But, um, you know, he's doing the next best thing. He's, he's letting people know that he's thinking about it. Yeah, and he actually spoke about it in the press conference. Apparently, he was doing, uh, De Bruyne was doing it last evening as well. And he said, to quote Mitchell Stark, he said, but today when, he, uh, when, when I saw he was literally halfway down Punt Road or da- halfway down to Punt Road. And the thing with Mitchell Stark is, I've heard him talk about it before, because of his action, he can always see from the corner of the eye where the non-striker is. But it's very difficult for him once he gets into the load up to stop himself and do it. It's not possible. He'll, he'll injure himself. So if ever Mitchell Stark has to run someone out at the non-striker's end, he has to do it intentionally where he runs in and he just takes the bails off like before he hits the delivery stride. So uh, it, it, yeah, for most fast bowlers, a spinner is slightly easier when you can kind of stop and you can do it. But yeah, I'm surprised we didn't talk about it earlier. All right. That's enough from us, the Final Word Daily. We'll be back for the Sydney Test Match. Jeff Lemon, Bharat Cinderace. And in between times, Adam Collins and I will have the traditional Final Word New Year's show. Uh, That will be up at the end of the year. The best and worst of 2022 and all the rest of our end of year festivities. Might be a sneaky story time. Our history show in before the Sydney Test as well. Keep an eye on the podcast feed. That's the main place to find it. Keep watching. Keep finding some cricket around the world to entertain yourself. And if you want to help us keep making the show, patron.com slash the final word. That's enough from us from the MCG. Boxing Day test. It's all over. It's all over. It's all See over. you next time. The earned returns. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs>